Okay. Okay, Bez Hashem, today's daf is daf Lamed Vav. So uh, normally I have my pointer on, but I, I, you can see the Gemara from over here. Let's see. Okay, we're going to start from the beginning of the Gemara. Um, so just a background, just, just to where we're up to in the Gemara. The Gemara had a question. You know, when you go sell the chomets to you to the rabbi, hold on, Sheldon's entering. Hi, Sheldon. We just began. Hi. Thank okay, you. hi. We just began with Daflamid Vav and Malalf. So basically, what we're discussing over here is, you know, when you go to sell the chomets by the Rav, so the, you, the rabbi tells you that make me a shliach, make me a messenger so I can sell the chomets that's in your, in your house to the goy. And you make a Kenyan and he becomes your shliach. He becomes your messenger. Question is, the Gemara is discussing over here is when you come to the base of Migdash, uh, when you come to the base of Migdash and the Koyen is, is being sacrificing the carbon on your behalf and bringing it onto the Mizbeach and doing all the avoida, all the service, who is the messenger? Who, who is he the messenger of? Is he the messenger of Hashem? Uh, uh, of Hashem? Or is he the yes. messenger of you? In other words, do you have to, when you see the Koyen, you have to sell, tell him, hey, I'm, I'm making you my shliach to be marked with the carbon on my behalf. So that's the Gemara, Gemara's question. Is a Koyen shluche dishmaya, the, the messenger of heaven, or is the Koyen the shluche didam? Is the Koyen our messenger? And the Gemara is going to say, you can see right away what the nafkamina is. What's the nafkamina? If let's say the Koyen is usher for you to have Hanor from, you made a nether, that you're not going to benefit from the Koyen. So if you learn that he's your messenger, then he can't be he can't be your koyun to do bring your carbon. But if you learn that it's Shmayim, if he's the if he's a messenger of heaven, then he could bring your carbon. It's not he's not your shliach. Hashem sent him. He's just there doing the job that Hashem sent him to do. Now, that's one point. The other point is that there are two types of carbonos. Normal carbon that you have to bring, let's say a chatas, an oila, a shlamim that you're donating, or you did an avera and you need a kapara. That's a normal carbon. Then there are other carbonas that you are required to bring, but they it's not because you did an Avera. It sound, it's, it's named like you did an Avera, but it's not because you did an Avera. It's an enabling carbon. This enabling carbon allows you to, this enabling carbon allows you to eat kachim. You tame, and you went to the mikvah. You still can't eat kachim until you bring this carbon. And so some of those carbonists are known as a chatos of a, of a yoledis, or someone who is a zav, he has to bring a chatos, or a betzoyer has to bring a chatos. By bringing the chatos, it's not so much a kapara, it's more of an enabling car carbon, like an ashram, that allows you to, that allows you to eat carbonus. So let's begin the Gemara. Hi, we're beginning the top of the Aflam Edvav, Amar Aleph. Mosif Rafsimi Baraba. Rafsimi Baraba Shimi Baraba asked the question. Uh um Aya Koyen Yisraik Olaf Dam Khatose Vidam Ashomai. If 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 the Koyen, if there's somebody that you can't benefit from, then he's permitted to to um you, you're permitted to 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 do the service and bring your uh, bring the Dam Khatas and the Dam Asham on to on, on your behalf. So the question is, we see right away that he could bring carbonus on your behalf. I, the coins Asr Bahano, we see that he's permitted to do so. So it's proof that Kohanim are Shluche Dishmaya. That's the point. The Kohanim is Shluche Dishmaya. And that's why he can bring your Dam Chatas and Dam Asham. And says the Gemara, no, it's Dam Chatas Shel Metzoira, the Dam Ashoma Shel Metzoira. It's the Dam Chatas of a, of a Metzoira and the, the Asham of a carbon Metzoira. And the, again, this carbon that Metzoyer bring is not so much for forgiveness, but it's a it's a it's a purification process that allows the <laughs> Metzoyer that allows the Metzoyer to um, allows the Metzoyer to um, uh, allows the Metzoyer to uh, allows the Metzoyer to eat the carbonos to eat kachim, and more important that that you don't he doesn't have to be your messenger. In fact, I can go. Uh, I know a Metzoyer. And I don't even have to tell him I can bring a carbon on his behalf. The Gemara is, how do you know that? Except it says in the Pasuk, Zois tia Torah Samitsoira, Bain Godel, Bain Cotton. Whether the Mitsoira is a Godel or whether he's a Cotton, 
uh, somebody could bring the carbon on his behalf. Now, if he's a young, if he's a under bar mitzvah and, and he's somebody's bringing the carbon on his behalf, obviously he didn't make a mishliach. A cotton can't make a mishliach. So we see that there's no union of shlichus uh, to bring these type of carbonus. So it's not, in, it doesn't answer our question because it's a unique type of carbon that does not need shlichus. So you can't prove either way whether kaihanim in our shluchi de shmaya or shluchi de dam because these type of carbonus don't need shlichus. Tanam, we learned in the Mishnah. Ha kahanem, a kahanem, she piglu ba migdash. The Mishnah says, a kahanem that made a carbon pigle. That means a kahan, by thinking the wrong thoughts. Let's say he thinks as he's doing the service, eh, I'm not going to do it right now. I want to do this service in five days from now. So that, that postles the carbon. That's called pigle. And therefore, a kahan that thinks a bad thought while he's doing the service, so then he could disqualify the carbon. So Mizidin, if he does it on purpose, Kayovin, he has to pay the owner back the carbon because, you know, he, he now caused him a loss because the carbon is possible. And now the owner still has to bring a new carbon. him, Paturim. But if he did it by mistake, then what? Then he's Potter to, to if he didn't, you know, he didn't know he was thinking or, or wasn't focused. So he parceled the carbon and he was very honest about it. Right. So then he, we don't require him to pay back the owner. It's the owner's loss. It's, 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 it's the owner's loss. Ella Shepigulam Pigal. Even if he did it by mistake. So then the, the carbon is still disqualified. So that's the point. That's the end of the mission. Now, the Gemara explains. The Gemara brings this proof. If you're going to say, that a regular coin, when he's bringing a carbon, he sent, he's a messenger of heaven. Hashem made him the shliach. Hainu, that's why she pigul and pigul. That's why a, dis, a, a bad thought disqualifies a carbon. He's working for Hashem. And when he's bringing the carbon and he thinks a bad thought, that means that the carbon becomes puzzle. And Eli Yamit, but if you want to say shluchi dunhava, that he's your messenger, so then how can he disqualify your carbon? Amai, pigul and Bigel, why would you say that the, the carbon is puzzle? Le mele, let us say, I made you a messenger. You, Mr. Koyan, you're my messenger. I only sent you to do something correct, but not to corrupt, not to mess things up. And therefore, if your bad thought should not puzzle my carbon, because if you do something wrong, you're not considered my messenger. So must be... That what? That the shluche the shmaya. That they're a messenger of heaven, and that's why the carbon could be possible. And so, so that's what the Gemara says. No, you don't have a proof. They're not shluche the shmaya. Amre, I will tell you that pigle is different. Shani pigle, pigle is different. The Omakra, because the Pasik says that even if he's not your messenger, loy yechashev loy, no matter what he thinks, it, it destroys the carbon. There's an extra Pasik over here that says loy yechashev loy that a bad thought could disqualify the carbon. Me call Mokoim, it's, it's Marba, no matter who's thinking the thought, even if the coin is not your messenger, he could still disqualify the, even if he is your mess, uh, uh, even if he is your messenger, he could still disqualify the carbon. That's the point. No matter who's thinking, even if he is your messenger, and you could always say, oh, if you're my messenger, I didn't send you to mess things up. Nevertheless, the carbon would still be possible. So what the Gemara just ends up over here is that the Gemara is inconclusive. When the coin is working in the base of Migdash, whose uh -huh. messenger is he? Is he the messenger of Hashem? Or if he's, uh, he's the messenger of you? And you can't look at his paycheck, who's signing the paycheck, because that's not the indication of whose messenger he is. So the Gemara leaves this unresolved. In other places, the Gemara speaks, has the same sugya, and comes to the conclusion that they are shluche bishmaya. But we'll leave it for now. Gufa, we learned in the Gemara before. Amr Rabbi Yochanan, Rabbi Yochanan says, Hakoil tzrichen das. If I want to bring a carbon on behalf of somebody else, he has to know that I'm bringing the carbon on his behalf. So let's say uh, I have to bring a carbon oiler, and somebody wants to do it on my behalf. So then I have to know that he's doing it on my behalf in order for me to get the credit. Chutz, except mimchusa kipara, uh, types of carbonus that are brought to enable somebody to eat kachim. Those are called somebody missing a kapara. In other words, he has like a, a, 
a roadblock that blocks him from eat, eating kachim, and he has to bring a certain carbon to enable him to allow him to eat kachim, then he doesn't not he doesn't have to make he has he doesn't have to be aware that you're bringing a carbon on his behalf. Automatically, it works, even if he did not make you the message. You just tell him, oh, by the way, I brought you your, your carbon that you needed to bring, and now the guy can eat kachim. Share Odom, because a person can maybe carbon al hakatanim. A person could bring uh, uh, the Gemara extends it. And since the Torah said that if your son is a Zav, let's say your son is a Zav, a Katan, you could bring uh, the carbon on his behalf. You could bring a carbon on his behalf. So so you could bring a you could bring hold on. Uh, hold on. You you can bring a carbon on his behalf. So so therefore we're going to extend that and say that we see that by these carbonas the Torah did not uh, did not require you to be aware since you're bringing it on behalf of your cotton. He didn't make your shliach. So it's a proof that you you can bring it without the awareness of the person that wants to bring the carbon. So therefore we extend it by a godol that even if. A guy who's a Zav, let's say a person is a Zav, an adult is an Zav, and all the reason why he has to bring a carbon is only to enable him to eat kachim, somebody else can bring it on his behalf. So the Gemara says, if that's the case, I'll find you a situation that where you could extend the, this, this to every carbon. Elamiyate, if what you're saying is true, Yave Adam Chatas Chalev Al A person who did an Avera eating the Chalev of an animal. So somebody else can bring the chatas on his behalf, the atonement. Why? Because we see that when we get extended, just like we find a shekane oda, maybe al ishta shaita krab Yehuda. A person, let's say his wife, who's insane, he she ate chalif, and the husband needs to bring the carbon chatas on his wife's behalf, so he can bring the carbon chatas on his wife's behalf. Now, now by derivation. Since uh, you don't need, the, the, obviously, his wife is not making him a messenger to bring the carbon. She's insane. So, therefore, we'll extend it. Just like we see that it works by, uh, uh, by a shaita wife who needs to bring a carbon chatas. So, let's extend it. Every person that needs to bring a carbon chatas, you can bring it on their behalf. Alama Amr Ablaza. Why did Rablaza say? Hifresh chatas chalev al chaveri. If someone separated and brought a carbon chatas, for, for his friends Avera who did who ate chalif, who ate the fats, that doesn't that doesn't that doesn't that it, it's not it's not worth anything. In other words, the friend still has to bring his own carbon chatas. Why doesn't it work? Just like a husband can bring uh, the carbon chalif for his wife uh, who ate chalif, so therefore we'll extend it that uh, any person could bring for somebody else if they if they're obligated to bring a carbon. So the Gemara just questions the premise. You just said a statement that if a person has a wife who's a shaita and that shaita lady ate chalev, the husband has to bring a carbon. That's an impossible case, says the Gemara. Ishta shaita hechidami. How's that possible that a wife who's insane could eat chalev and, and the husband will be obligated to bring a carbon? If she ate the chalev, the, the, the which is usher, and she ate it when she's insane, she can't bring a carbon because she's not. She, she didn't do an Avera. She was insane when she did the Avera. If she ate it when she's uh, it was when she was normal, and then she became insane. The person who ate chalim, the Hifrish carbon, and was separated carbon, and became insane, and then became normal. So a person who became insane, and then and after he was makrif, after he sep separated himself and made that this animal will be a carbon, and then he became say he became insane, he became normal again. So between him mafreshing the carbon became insane, and then he became normal. Puzzle, he doesn't have to bring a carbon. Hoyel venitcha yidoche. Some since he since he. Since he the carbon was overridden because he was in temporarily insane, so even when he becomes normal again, the carbon is pushed away and cannot be brought. He doesn't have to bring uh, carbon. So what the Gemara just accomplished over here is that you there's no situation where 
a, a husband will bring a carbon chatas on behalf of his wife, a carbon chatas on behalf of his wife who ate chalif. That's an impossible situation. The only time a, a husband brings on behalf of his wife a carbon who's insane, if the woman is insane, if, is if she was a Yaledis. So if Loyalenu, she was a Yaledis and insane, then the carbon, the husband brings the carbon, but that type of carbon is a Mechusa Kapara carbon, just enables her to eat Kachim. So therefore, you can't bring a proof for every other carbon, uh, 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 that the, the, for every carbon, that a person could bring a carbon on behalf of his friend. So now the Gemara says one more point. Elamiata. Let it, again, the Gemara just was going with this situation. If I find that I can bring a carbon on behalf of a cotton, that proves that there's no shlichus involved in this, in this carbon, right? If I can bring a carbon on behalf of my son, that proves that type of carbon does not need shlichus. If so, if so, and therefore, then, then somebody else can bring that same carbon on behalf of a godol, even though he's not a shliach, because we see that you don't need that the person should do the carbon. We need the carbon should be done. So the Gemara wants to know what's the what's the what's what's the din regarding a carbon pesach. Elami ata. Come to let's let's examine this case. Yavi adam pesach A person should uh, uh, bring the carbon pesach on behalf of his friend. Why? A person could bring the carbon Pesach on behalf of his sons and daughters. So, on the sons and daughters. So, we see that, that a person brings a carbon Pesach and he could include in the carbon Pesach his sons and daughters. When you go to the coin, Shech me my carbon Pesach, you have to give him a list, like a, a notebook list. Who's <laughs> names are being included in this carbon Pesach. You give him that list and you can include your, your young children. Even though your young children didn't tell you to put them their name on the list, they are included. So we see that carbon Pesach doesn't need shlichus. So therefore, if carbon Pesach doesn't need shlichus, let's extend it to somebody else. Two men, they're not related to each other. And uh, Reuven and Shimon, and Reuven tells Shimon, Hey, by the way, I, I put your name on the on my carbon pesach. You don't have to bring it. But Alam Am Rablaza, but why did Rablaza say Hifrish Pesach Al Khabera also the like Klim? That if you if you if you if you separated a carbon pesach on behalf of your friend and you told him, Oh, by the way, I put your name on my carbon pesach, lay also like klum. That doesn't mean anything. The other person didn't make you the messenger, and therefore he's not included and he cannot eat from the carbon pesach. So how, how, do you, how do you resolve that? Why by a cotton it works and why by a stranger it doesn't work? Omar Abzeira, Abzeira says, very simple. To actually have to write your children's name on your carbon Pesach, you don't really have to do that, by the way. When you, if you come home on, on the Seder night and you forgot to tell the Koyan that, oh, by the way, I meant to put my children's name on the carbon Pesach that I just brought. They could eat, still eat from the carbon Pesach. It's only Midra Bonan you should tell the Kayan that my, my young kids are on the, on the carbon Pesach. Really, a cotton does not have to be included on the list. They don't have to be uh, included on the list. Mimai, how do I know that's such a situation? Midetanan, we learned in a following case in the Mishnah. A guy tells his young children, okay? He, he, has, he has young kids under Bar Mitzvah. And he says, I'm going to walk into this place of Megdus. On whichever one of you is going to be first to walk into Jerusalem. In other words, I'm shechting this carbon Pesach. And I'm, I, I'm, I'm, I'm there in the base of Megdus. And you're, you're so lazy, or he was thinking his kids are not, you know, not diligent to come quickly to Yerushalayim. So he says, I'm going to shech this carbon Pesach. And the only one that could join my carbon Pesach, uh, the only one that could join my carbon Pesach is the first kid that comes to Yerushalayim. That's, he's the one that could be included in my carbon Pesach. So the Mishnah says, So let's say the first kid walks, mo most of his body came into Yerushalayim first. He gets his piece. 
and his other brothers can join them him in the carbon Pesach. Now, so what we see here is this guy shechted his carbon Pesach, and he's telling his kids, uh, the only way you're going to be included in my carbon Pesach if you show up to Yerushalayim after I slaughter the carbon Pesach. Whoever came first, he gets to eat the carbon Pesach. But the Mishnah says everybody can eat the carbon Pesach. But the, what you see from here, the Amrit, if you say, Sela boyas Raisa, how could it be if he if the kid is supposed to be included in the list when you're shechting the carbon pesach? So how could it be that the father is saying that after the slaughtering of the carbon pesach, then I'm going to decide who which one of my kids will be invited to eat the carbon pesach? Uh, if 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 the deraisa he's they're supposed to know that before you slaughter the carbon pesach, then how can he offer that uh, deal to his kids? Ella. So therefore, it must be that your kids could always eat from the carbon Pesach. Even if you didn't give them, put their name on the list, there's always room for the kids uh, to eat from the carbon Pesach, young, young kids. So then the question is, then what's the point of telling the, which kid comes first in Jerusalem? He could eat from the carbon Pesach. And he's trying to say that, you know, wink, wink, nobody else can. How's that? What's, what's the point of the father? Why did the father say such a statement? He wanted to make his kids rush to do a mitzvah. He fooled them. You know, a lot of fool your kids into thinking something in order to push them to do a mitzvah. So this is what the father told him. I, no kid will be able to eat. The only kid that can eat from this carbon Pesach is the only one that shows up first to Jerusalem. And then all the kids are rushing and one kid walks in. But then the Mishnah says all the kids can eat because they don't really need to be on the list. And really, they can show up to the say that everybody can partake the, from, the, from, the, from the carbon Pesach. Obviously, they're under Bar Mitzvah. Tanya Nami Hochi, and this is a proof to the statement, my Sahoya, there was a similar story where the father said, and the Gemara says he had daughters and sons, the Kadmu Bonus Labonim, and their daughters came before the boys. They showed up first to Jerusalem, and then the boys came. The Nimsu, we found out, Bonus Ruizrois. Ubanim Shvalim. Sometimes the, the 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 daughters were more diligent and the, the children were more like lazy, tardy about the whole thing. So the 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 the, the, the fervor for the mitzvah was more by the daughters. But the point is it doesn't say that the boys were not allowed to eat the carbon pesach. The truth is they were allowed to eat the carbon pesach. So we see from this whole point and this whole exercise that when it comes to carbon pesach. The carbon pesach for your children. It's not like they that they, there's no shlichas. They they don't need to be included on that list. So therefore, the fact is that you can't bring a proof just because the children can eat from the carbon pesach. So you want to say that you could shech the carbon on behalf of of an, somebody else. Reuven could shech the carbon pesach on behalf of the shimon. Uh, the fact is that shimon is a gadol. He's an adult, and in order for him to be adult to eat from somebody's carbon pesach. He had to be on the list beforehand. So that ends this sugya. Now we turn the page to Lamed Vavah Mebez. So let's go to Lamed Vavah Mebez. And here the Gemara starts with a new thing. We learned that, again, Ruuvein is the Madir and Shimon is the Mudar. In other words, Ruuvein said, uh, said to Shimon that all my possessions should be ushered to you. Okay, so now Shimon cannot benefit from Reuven's possessions. Okay, that was the Mishnah. So the Mishnah says, Betoyrim es true that Reuven is allowed to take off Truma, and let's say Shimon owed Truma. Reuven is allowed to take off Truma for whatever Shimon owes on his behalf, and it's not called benefiting Shimon. So we'll discuss that now in the Gemara. The Gemara is discussing, uh, imagine this case. Think about this case. A man goes over to you and says, you know, you have a mitzvah to pay tuition and send your kids to yeshiva. Okay? And it's 15000 whatever it is. And I'm going to, so he says to you, I'm going to pay your, tu he doesn't tell you. And he says, I'm, uh, and he pays your tuition on your behalf. Do, do you have to know about it? Do you have to know about it? Well, this is a good thing because now you're, you're, you don't have to pay the tuition. Somebody paid it on your behalf. Or, in order for him to do so, he has to tell you that he's doing it. Why? Because you have a mitzvah to, to, to send your kids to school. And if and if somebody does this mitzvah on your behalf, he's sort of st stealing that mitzvah from you. 
and therefore he can't do it without your permission. This is similar to what the Gemara is going to ask right now. The Gemara asks a question. His friend had to take off Truma. We had a, like a pile. He's called a Baal Hakri. He had a pile of apples that he was supposed to take off Truma. And somebody says, somebody says, does, takes off Truma from his own. He gives extra from his own pile on behalf of his friend without telling his friend. So the Gemara says, should he notify his friend? Does he have to notify his friend or not? Me, I'm reading, do you say, even the schus hu loy, since it's a benefit, you know, when you're doing, you're, you're saving the guy truma, you know, you, he doesn't have to give truma, and therefore, loy tzarech ledas, you don't have to notify him, because for sure he'll agree to that. He doesn't have to give off this truma. Or dilma, or maybe the, the guy with the apples that's supposed to give off truma, mitzvah delehi, it's his mitzvah to give it to the Kohen. V'niche leilim avadeh. And he wants to do it himself. He doesn't want to lose the mitzvah of giving truma to a client. So without permission, you can't take off truma on behalf of somebody else. So the Gemara says, Toshima, come in here from our Mishnah. Toirem es mitrumoisav es masroisav ledatoy. Our Mishnah says that Ruven, the mader, could take off truma on behalf of Shimon. Let's say Shimon owes truma. Ruven, whose who Shimon is Asr Bahana, can take off truma and maestris uh, if, by notifying him. But my askina, what are we talking about? What is our Mishnah talking about? Ilema min balakri al shel bal hakri. That what is Ruvain doing exactly? He goes over to Shimon's uh, fruit, uh, fr Shimon's uh, basket, and takes off Shimon's, Shimon's uh, fruit and gives it to the Kayan, right? He takes off Truma from Shimon's basket. Uldatai deman. And who's who gave Uladate Niman? Who did Shimon notify? In other words, did Shimon actually tell Ruvin to do so? That means Shimon was fully aware that he made Ruvin a messenger to go to his basket and take off Truma. Man Shavi El Shliach. Who made him uh, the Shliach? In other words, if Shimon actually told Ruvin to do something like that, then basically Shimon is benefiting from Ruvain because what Ruvain is doing, what, what is following the instructions that Shimon sent him to do. And, and, and Shimon is not supposed to benefit from Ruvain. So that cannot be the case of a Mishnah. If it's, if it's Ruvain doing it on his own, he can't do it on his own without asking permission from Shimon. And if if Shimon sent him to do the shlichas, if Shimon sent Reuven to do the shlichas, then Shimon is benefiting from Reuven if Reuven follows through. Ella, it's not that it's not the case where we're taking Shimon's fruit from Shimon's fruit. Ella Mishaloi al Shalakri. Reuven is taking off his own fruit from his own basket on behalf of Shimon. Uladate Demam, who who gave the awareness? Who's who's who is aware of this whole situation? <clears throat> if it's Shimon who's made aware that this is do, being done on this on his behalf. In other words, Shimon said to Reuven, "Oh, you know, I, if you want to do me a favor, take off truma from your fruit and give it to the coin, and that will that will fix my fruit." That means Reuven is giving benefit to Shimon, and he's not allowed to do that. That what the Mishnah means that Reuven, without notifying Shimon, did it. Ah, if Reuven, without notifying Shimon, did, did it. If he was supposed to notify him, uh, then, then, then Shimon is getting benefit. He doesn't have to notify him. So what basically what the Gemara says is that our Mishnah is precisely your question. Our Mishnah says that Reuven is taking off Reuven's fruits to fix Shimon's basket of fruit. So even though Reuven is usher, uh, Shimon is usher to benefit from Reuven, but the, the, what we're talking about over here, that Reuven is doing it without notifying Shimon. So basically Shimon's not benefiting uh, by somebody following, following his instructions. So that's why Reuven is allowed to do it. So your question is, and, and a regular case, when somebody wants to take a fruit, take off truma on behalf of somebody else without notifying him, 
it should be permitted. And that's uh, that's what our Mishnah that's what our Mishnah seems to say. And says the Gemara la'olam. No, that's not true. Michelle Balakri al Balakri. Actually, Ruuvein is going over to Shimon's fruits and taking Shimon's fruits and giving it to the Koyan. I Shimon is making Ruuvein a shliach. How's that possible? Kita Amar Rava. The Rava says it's not like Shimon made Ruuvein a direct shliach. He made an announcement. Call Haroitz Litrim Yave Yitrim. Whoever wants to came, come tr- take off Truma could do so and come to my fruits and do it on my behalf. So therefore, therefore, this is the case of the Mishnah. Very simple. Ruuvain is going over to Shimon and taking Shimon's fruits and giving it to the Koyin. I, Shimon, is not allowed to benefit from Ruuvain. So how is Ruuvain allowed to follow the instructions of Shimon? The answer is he's not. Because just Shimon made an announcement and he made the announcement for everybody. Whoever wants to take off Truma for my fruits and have the right to give it to whichever coin they want, they can do so. So Reuven, who does it, is not really following Shimon's instructions. So therefore, he's not giving a direct benefit to Reuven, to Shimon. Reuven is not giving a direct benefit to Shimon, and that's why it's allowed to be done. But in the Hanami, we leave our question unresolved. What's our question again? That if somebody without notifying the owner, totally keeps him in the dark and then says to him, oh, by the way, I took my own fruits and gave it to the Kayin and I had your mind. So therefore, you don't have to give off Truma from your own fruits because I did it for you, for my fruits. And you didn't notify him. We don't know. Possibly you're not allowed to do that because you're stealing a mitzvah from the person. New question. And that, that will take us to the end. Boyam and A, Rabbi Yirmi, Rabbi Zera. Rabbi Yirmi asked a question from Rabbi Zera. Let's say, let's say, again, I give permission. There is permission over here. That means I, Reuven is taking off his own fruits to fix Shimon's fruits. And Shimon gave permission to Reuven. It's not talking about a mudar hana. Everything is permitted. Shimon gave permission for Reuven to take off his own fruits and give it to the coin. The question is, who decides? Now, th- there is a value. Let's say I'm supposed to give truma. In a regular case, if I'm supposed to give truma, I can accept from my own fruits. I can, somebody, my friend, could give me $10 and say, do me a favor, give your truma to my son-in-law, the coin. So that's called the goodwill. The goodwill, it belongs to the person. I can decide if it's my own fruits. I can decide which coin I'm going to give it to. And I can even take money from my friend to convince me to give it to his son-in-law. OK, so the question over here, the Gemara is asking, here you have a guy who has a basket of fruits, but he's not giving the truma from his own fruits. His friend is giving the if his friend is taking off truma from his own fruits and trying to fix it. So Reuven is taking his fruits and fixing Shimon's basket. So the Gemara says, Reuven is taking off his truma from his own fruits on behalf of his friend. Who gets the goodwill over here? Who can decide which coin to give it to? Me, I'm reading. Do we say, Right? If, if, you're gonna, if it wasn't for Ruuve, then Shimon's fruits would, wouldn't get fixed. So Ruuve should decide which coin to give it to. Or maybe not so. If it wasn't for Shimon's a basket of fruit that needs to get fixed, then Reuven would not be able to take off Truma. So you need them both. You need Reuven and Shimon. You need the Mafrish, who's the Reuven, and you need the Shimon, whose, whose fruits need to get feet fixed. So that was the question of, of Rabbi Yirmiya to Rabbi Zera. Amalei, so Rabbi Zera answered, Amalei, Amakra, the Pasuk says, Eis kol tvoa So the Pasuk seems to imply whoever uh, fruits are getting fixed. Benasata, he's the one that decides which kind to give it to. So it's up to Shimon to decide which kind to give it to. And in fact, Shimon could, you know, take money from his friend uh, to decide which to help him give the to order that the truma should be given to that person's son-in-law or something like that. Asave. The Gemara asks one final question, and the Gemara is not going to uh, come to this conclusion. Asave. Toirim as trumoisav as masroisav ledatoi. That in our Mishnah, it says 
that Reuven, again, back to our Mishnah with the Mudar Hana, Reuven made his usher to give benefit to Shimon. And yet the Mishnah says that he's allowed to take off Truma on behalf of Shimon. The Gemara brings to say the same proof. If you want to say that Shimon can decide, can tell Reuven which client to give it to, so basically, Shimon is benefiting from Reuven. When Reuven is going to give off the truma from him, fruits, to, to on behalf of Shimon, and Shimon can tell him which client to give it to, so that benefit of being able to have goodwill is, being, is generated by Reuven to Shimon. And Shimon is not supposed to have benefit from Reuven. So how do you explain the Mishnah? It must be the opposite, that Shimon does not tell Reuven which kind to give it to. It's Reuven's fruits, and Reuven is, is giving it on behalf of Shimon, but Reuven still could decide which kind to give it to. That's proof from our Mishnah. Amre, so we said no. Loi, Michel Balakri, Shal Shel Balakri. It's actually Shimon's fruits that's being given to the Kayin. It's not that Ruvain's taking from his fruits, giving it to the Kayim. Ruvain is going to Shimon's fruits and giving it to the Kayim. So certainly um, it's Shimon's fruits. That's why he can decide to give it to the, whichever Kayim. Because it's not like Shimon made Ruvain his messenger. It's just that whoever wants to come to take off Truma could take off Truma on my behalf. In other words, he didn't make Reuven a direct messenger because that would be Osir because Reuven is following his instructions. You know, he just gave a general statement that whoever wants to give Truma can do it on my behalf and, and, and I'm okay with that. Okay, finally, the Gemara just gains off. Tashima come in here. The Amar Ababo, Amar Rabbi Yochanan. Ababo said in the name of Rabbi Yochanan, Hamagdish, Moisev Chaimish, Umeschapa Oisa Truma. We're not going to deal with that. But Rabbi Yochanan said the following thing. Whoever gives truma from his on, on behalf of somebody that's not his. That means he's giving, like our case, he's giving Ruvain, he's giving uh, off truma to fix Shimon's fruits. He's the one that decides which kayan to give it to. Not like what we said before. He darshans the Pasuk differently, that the one that's mafrish, the one that's taking off truma, he's the one to decide which kayan to give it to. So a lot of different sugis that we discussed tonight, about four, uh, that made, that's what made it a little bit uh, 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 full daft today. Thank you. I get the nacht. Okay, tomorrow back to normal. Okay. Drive safely. Drive safe. Yes. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you. Thank you very okay. much. Okay, Zag is that.